I'm 19 years old, I'm a sophomore in college, and I'm biracial. My dad is black and my mom is white. Um, I have a brother that's one year older than me, he's a junior in college, and my sister is one year younger than me, she's a freshman in college, and then I have a sister who's a sophomore in high school, she's 16. So um, I have one biological sibling and two adoptive siblings. They were adopted when I was very young, so they've always been always been a part of my family. When I was growing up, I never was phased by the fact that my mom was white and my dad was black. It was never an odd thing to me because I grew up in a household with two different colors and that was normal to me. And so it didn't seem odd to me ever that I had a mixed race family or that I was mixed race or anything like that. The funny thing about the fact that I have two adopted siblings is that I often get the question of if I'm adopted or not. It's not something that I ever thought was a normal question because I don't go around asking my friends if they're adopted or not. When I was um, a kid at a theater that I had been going to for a long time, probably since I was four years old, one of the men that worked there was talking to my mom, who had been at this theater with me since I was, again, four years old, but he said, how long have you had him? Because he didn't, he didn't realize that I wasn't adopted, and he just assumed, after all of these years of seeing me, a brown girl, go home with my white mom, um, he didn't think that it was possible that um, it could be that my dad's black and or anything like that that could contribute to the fact that I'm brown. She was really confused and said, um, what do you mean, when did I get her? And he's like, like, when did you get her? When did she come to you? And she said, birth? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really sure what you mean. And he's like, oh, so you adopted her as an infant. Was it a surrogacy? You know, what, what kind of adoption was that? And she's like, oh, you, oh, you think she's adopted? No, she's not adopted. I, I had her. She's my child. And my mom finally said, here, let me show you a picture of my husband. Maybe you'll understand then. And he was astounded. He was like, oh my gosh, I never even knew. I didn't know she had siblings. I didn't know she was biracial. I didn't know. And I was 14 at that point. And so it was, you know, he had known me for almost 10 years at that point. I thought it was funny. When I first heard the story, I thought it was so funny. I was like, oh, that's so silly of him to think I'm adopted. Oh, how ironic since I do have two adopted siblings and I'm the one they think's adopted. He's been doing shows at this theater for almost 10 years and my dad comes to every single one of these shows and he never put the two together. It didn't offend me or anything at first. You know, when I first started getting those types of questions, it was more of like, a, like oh, how silly. They just don't know. And then when I, was growing up, I got more questions like that. Um, you know, going through high school, people would assume I was Hispanic, and so they would come up to me, to, like talk to me in class or in the hallway, just speaking Spanish to me. And I don't, I don't know Spanish. I mean, I know some, um, but not nearly enough to carry a conversation with someone that's fluent or that's their first language. The boys that would sit behind me in Spanish class um, would talk about, you know. Um, are you Mexican? And I'd say no. And they'd say, are you sure? I'd say, yeah. Like, of course. Am I sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I would keep getting questions about that or the people that would come up to me and say, what are you? And I say, what am I? What do you mean, what am I? And I, of course, know what they mean by that because I've gotten this question so many times. They mean, what race are you? Because they're curious. But instead of saying, what race are you? They shorten it down to, what are you? and it makes it seem like the one thing they care about is my race. They don't care about that I'm a girl, that I'm a daughter, I'm a student, I'm a Christian, I'm so many other things other than my race. So then I got to college and you know I started seeing all these people with different backgrounds and I had this image of the world that was growing day by day because I was meeting international students and people from different backgrounds that I hadn't met before. I still run into those same exact questions and problems and um, you know before I previously thought that it was based out of racism or hate or anything like that you know the things that I was told to believe by my black friends you know if you run into people that ask you these types of questions they're racist so getting to know more people and see their backgrounds and things like that it's it's just a base of ignorance instead of racism because racism is just based out of hatred there's no rhyme or reason to why people hate so much 
whereas ignorance is more of they just haven't been exposed to things or weren't told what and what not to say. As a freshman in college, I got a question about if I was adopted or not um, from one of my friends that I had gotten to know over the year and was very comfortable with and we're sitting at the lunch table in the cafeteria and he says, are you adopted? Like it was a casual over lunch topic that the whole table should enjoy listening to. And I said, um, no, are you? And he says, no, I'm not adopted. Kind of looks around to his friends like, why did she ask me that question? I asked her that for a reason. She knows. Kind of stared at each other for a second because that's a little uncomfortable because um, I knew what he wanted me to say and he wouldn't. And so he moved on to say, um, well, it's just because I've seen your mom, um, you know, on campus and she's white and you're not. So that would be called a microaggression. Statements and questions that are, um, have little inherent subtext things of racism, you know, like the what are you question or are you adopted? Um, the people that come up to me and just pet my hair because they think it's beautiful. I, I appreciate that and I understand that you think it's beautiful because it's not something you're used to. If you come up to me and touch my hair without asking, I feel like a dog. And I'm not a dog that you're coming to pet, I'm a person. It's not something that is okay. And again, I understand that it's because you're curious and you're, you think it's interesting. Um, and that's why I am okay with people talking to me about it and why I don't get mad when people do it. I just try to explain to them, don't do that to anybody else. No, because while I'll be kind to you and I'll be, I'll be gracious toward your ignorance, um, the next person will not be. I think that most of the time when people are asking me if I'm adopted, they wanna know about my cultural background or my familial makeup. And so if they say, oh, tell me about your family background. And, you know, I'll go into, oh yeah, you know, my dad's in the military, I have three siblings, my mom is a stay-at-home mom and she's awesome. You know, if that's not enough information for you, which of course it's not the answer to your question, then you can say something like, is your family of a specific group or is your, you know, um, I noticed that your mom doesn't look like you. You want to talk to me about that? That's better than just assuming things. One thing that the boy that I was talking to at this lunch um, said was, well, do you think that adoption is a bad thing? And I said, of course I don't think adoption is bad. And later on I talked to him and said, if you really knew more about me, you would know that I do have two adopted siblings. And if you were to ask him that question, they would be incredibly washed over in emotion and memories of why they're adopted. Family. That's not something you want to remind someone in the middle of a lunch table at a cafeteria. You should ask in a more private setting and things like that. Since my mom is white and my dad is black, I often get questions of, oh, so are you more white or are you more black? And I say, well, that's not a fair question because I'm half white and half black. There you go. And they say, well, no, what do you identify with more? You know, are you more of a black girl or are you more of a white girl? And I say, well, um, I don't know if anyone will ever believe that I'm a white girl because <laughs> I have a year long tan. When I go to hang out with my black friend, they say things like, oh, well, Ashley's not really black or Ashley's not this, Ashley's not black enough. And they put a kind of a quantitative limit on my background. I run into a lot of issues with thing called colorism, um, which is a little bit like racism, but in a different way. It's more of a subcategory of racism within a race, um, specifically the black race. Um, there is a consistent trend, not just white versus black, but lighter pigment versus darker pigment. I've never, you know, run into exact racists that yell at me and call me bad words and are discriminatory toward me because of my, my tan skin and my dark hair. If anything, it's more like I, I'm excluded from both groups because neither of them identify with me and so then it leaves me alone. Whereas I identify with both of them. I had to be my own friend a lot of the time. My dad 
has this dark, creamy skin that I've always thought was so beautiful. And I love, I love putting my hand next to his because I love looking at the color differences and sometimes when my mom's around I'll put my mom's hand next to my dad's and my mom's hand next to mine also and you know when I was younger I'd make jokes about oh we make a s'more because I'm the graham cracker and my dad is the chocolate and my mom is the marshmallow you know you look at your dad and that's your first you know your first prince your first king and that's always who you make your perception of what a man is supposed to look like out of. I had never specifically attached the fact that my dad was black to my relationships, I suppose. You know, I just knew that I wanted a man that was successful, a man that was godly, you know, very Christian, um, and a man that loved his family um, because those are the attributes that my dad has that I look up to a lot. Um, he works really, really hard to provide for our family, and he's very involved with our church, and he does a lot of things that I appreciate and I want in my husband in the future um, but the fact that he has dark skin has nothing to do with those attributes and when I was a kid well even now um, people will say oh his dad's not really black his dad's white you know he just is black on the outside and white on the inside like an Oreo those are all the attributes that people attributed to being white and that's why my dad wasn't considered really black I always thought of that as a compliment. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, you're so right. My dad is all of those things that we attach to being white. And then when I started getting in college, I got a little offended by it eventually because that was not a compliment to then say that all black people in general weren't considered black if they were successful, well-spoken, educated, involved. So it's interesting to see that my ignorance as a child is something that you know I can resent now. When I was a sophomore in high school, I entered my poetry contest at my high school. It was titled Biracial Barbie because when I was younger, um, I always wanted to be fair-skinned and blonde and have blue eyes just like my Barbie dolls. Barbie can do anything. You know, she's a doctor. She's a mom she's all of these things and I saw a movie Life Size with Tyra Banks and I was like holy cow I can be a Barbie just like Tyra Banks I can be a model I can be a TV actress I can be a singer I can do whatever I want to do and so I wrote this poem called Biracial Barbie that addressed all of the things that I want to change in the world within my lifetime that come from the fact that I think I can do anything because I know I can do anything because I'm a woman and I know that women can do anything when they put their mind to it. I knew that not only because I was a woman but because I was biracial I could be a Barbie too and I was going to be all the things that I wanted to be just like Barbie and that being biracial didn't hold me back from doing that but in, in fact enhanced me and enhanced me as a person. It doesn't make me better than anyone else, it makes me more me. Thanks for coming to our discussion. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. I hope to see you in the next video. That's right, to be continued.